Welcome on in WIP Daily. Joe Giulio with you. Appreciate everyone listening, subscribing, following the podcast for watching our 94 WIP YouTube page and, and subscribe there as well to all the great podcasts. Myself, the uh, High Host podcast, uh, Go Birds with James and Jack. A lot there on the 94 WIP YouTube page, including uh, a lot of new videos live from the air, you know, episodes or pieces of shows on WIP. You can watch them on our YouTube page. So subscribe there and a lot to get into. And it's going to be a big month. I mean, Red October's arrived and obviously the Eagles right now are undefeated. We'll talk more about that Commanders game coming up tomorrow. But it's going to be a big month October the way it was last year. And hopefully for the Phillies, a long run through October. And we know over the next couple of days, nothing really matters. The Phillies try to get to 90 wins, which they probably will. They're at 89 now. First time since 2011, they'll, they'll get to 90 wins. I thought it was about a 91 win team before the season. I took those expectations down as the year went on, but they're going to get there. They're going to get to about 90, 91 wins and obviously be that number four seed in the playoffs. And the big question between now and next Tuesday when they open up, I think it gets Arizona, is going to be their pitching staff and which pitchers they decide to bring. And then really with that, how, what their roles are when we get to October. So let's get this out of the way first, then we'll go through the names. The rule is you have to have 13 pitchers. That is an MLB rule for the postseason. Each team has to have 13 pitchers on the roster. You cannot have less than that. So you can't in a three-game series. And really, that, that matters in the three-game series because you could, in essence, if, if this wasn't a rule and you had three top-notch starters, you could say, well, it's only three games. Uh, you know, I could really kind of pare down my pitching, maybe go with 12, extra bench guy, get you an extra bench back, get you a pinch runner. MLB doesn't allow that. The Phillies will have to have 13 pitchers on next week's roster. Now, the cool thing is you could change these rosters. So the, the, the Phillies aren't locked into this roster the entire postseason. So if they wanted to go and, let's say, leave someone off and then put them back on, that that is certainly possible. That, that is certainly realistic. And I think as we go through the names here, I think it's a real option for the Phillies if they want to leave off a starting pitcher to add another bullpen guy just you know, in case something weird happens in this in this wild card round. All right, so let's go through the names that we know will be on the roster, and then kind of pivot to where the decisions come from and what those guys' roles could be next week against Arizona. And we'll get Tucker up in a few minutes to give his thoughts on this. So the three starters, and you know, Rob Thompson is confirmed now. Game one is Zach Wheeler. Game two is Aaron Nola. Game three will be Ranger Suarez, but. You heard yesterday Rob Thompson kind of leave himself open to the idea that if Ranger Suarez is needed in some capacity in game one or two, he doesn't have to pitch game three. I mean, that that's a possibility. And we saw that last year where the Phillies were very liberal in how they use Ranger Suarez, who, by the way, hasn't pitched his greatest. I, I, I got to throw last night out the, the hangover game, whatever. But he hasn't had it. He has been super sharp in the month of September. And I don't feel as great about Ranger you know, based on his statistics that I, I did about three months ago. But I think Rangers kind of kind of picture where it's like you almost throw out unless the numbers are bad. If his, you know, if his ERA is between three seven and four one, does it really matter? I mean, you kind of know what you're getting with Rangers Suarez. Just hope his command is where it needs to be. But Wheeler game one, Nola game two, Suarez likely game three, but that could be thrown into a tizzy. I mean, if Wheeler or Nola gets shelled around or knocked around and they gotta come out in the second inning. It's all hands on deck. And the other thing to keep in mind is there's three straight days with games. There's no off days. So you need a deeper bullpen because if you need to use someone in game one and game two, are they available in game three? And then are they effective in game three? You know, I think we're at the point of the year where the Phillies would be open to using pretty much anyone, maybe other than Orion Kirkering, who we'll get to, the youngster who pitched last night in three straight days in the postseason because it's, it's the money time. But it, you, know, you get diminishing returns when you use a pitcher three straight days. So they're probably not want to do that. And I do think if we get to a game three and let's say Suarez is starting that game, well, he's going to have a very short leash. I mean, it might be one time through. The game three effectively next Thursday, if they, get, if they have to play that game, could be what amounts to a bullpen game where Suarez goes out there and it's very touch and feel. And if he gets you one time through the order and you feel great, are you sending him back out there for the fourth or fifth? But – if he's struggling, he's out of the game. So you need a combination of length, you need a combination of leverage guys, and you need to figure out a way to manage the bullpen where you might have to use guys in game one and two, and then who is available for game three. So he, here's what I have. I think the decisions 
are going to come down to whether or not the Phillies think they need to bring an extra long guy or they're willing to not do that in these games. So Wheeler, Nola, Suarez on the roster. That leaves us 10 spots for pitchers. Here's who I look at as locks. Like no matter what, they're bringing these guys onto the postseason roster and they're bringing them to October and they're bringing them in this in this first round. Kimbrell, Alvarado, Jeff Hoffman, Matt Strom, Gregory Soto. I think those five relievers, like they're just writing those five names down. It, no matter what, no matter what you feel about Craig Kimbrell right now, he's obviously going to be part of this, and they're bringing him with them. So Kimbrell, Alvarado, Hoffman, who's been a revelation, Matt Strom, Gregory Soto. Those five I consider absolute locks. That means there are five spots left, and the way I view it is you the Phillies will have to choose between six guys for these five spots. So one of these next bucket of names is not going to be on the roster next week. Christopher Sanchez. Sir Anthony Dominguez, and it, you know, I, I know he's pitched a little bit better last night, but I, I still think we're at the point where he, he is not a lock to be on the, on the for at least the first round roster. Walker, Taiwan Walker, Michael Lorenzen, Dylan Covey, who I, has pitched better. I mean, I, I was sitting here in June saying, how could this guy even be on the roster anymore? It's, it's ridiculous. But you look at his numbers the past two and a half months, Dylan Covey's pitched better. I mean, he just he has. And he has the ability to give you, you know, more than an inning at a time. And then, of, of course, Orion Kirkering, who just got here, you know, with the the cool moment on on Sunday night where he pitched his first game. The stuff is electric. Last night he wasn't as sharp, let, let a couple base runners, but he got two Ks and he got out of it. And just the way Rob Thompson has spoken, Orion Kirkering is going to be on the postseason roster. We will find out pretty quickly if he's a leverage guy or is he just there and you know, you break glass in case of emergency kind of thing. I I don't know. And one other thing before we kind of go through how I think they should structure this is, you know, there's no ghost runner, zombie runner, whatever you want to call it in the postseason. So we have three straight days of games, potentially Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there's, you know, their game three starter could have to be used in one of those first two games. Rob Thompson has acknowledged that he did it last year. And th there's no zombie runner, which means if we get a weird extra inning game or game one or two, you know, that game could go 15 or 16 innings. So you really have to protect yourself with some sort of length in the bullpen along with leverage guys. It's it's a very tricky – like it seems easy, like just chop off the starters and go with a, a, you know, a lot of bullpen guys because you're not going to use them. But you might have to, and, and it complicates things. So six guys for five spots. Sanchez, Christopher Sanchez, Sir Anthony Dominguez, Taiwan Walker, Michael Lorenzen, Dylan Covey, Orion Kirkering. So right now – Here's the, the name, because if we're taking five out of six, we can just chop one off and he's the one out. Right now, as I look at where the Phillies are at, I would leave Taiwan Walker off of this. I would not bring him onto the wild card roster at all. And I would rather go with Christopher Sanchez, who I think can help out of the bullpen. And apparently he's slated this weekend to pitch out of the bullpen. He could be an extras, your long guy. Or if Nola gets knocked out, your long guy, and you save Suarez for game three. So I, I, I think that is in play. And with the way Dylan Covey has pitched lately, I'm willing to take him on the postseason roster. I never thought I would say that. And they might not do this because they're afraid of an extra inning game. And maybe they're more comfortable giving the game three start to Taiwan Walker if they had to, if, you know, if they use Suarez at a relief in game one or two. But I think you can get through these games, win this series. And look, there's a chance they win in two games and all of this you know, break in case, case of emergency stuff is is not necessary. But I think you can get length out of Lorenzen. You can get length out of Covey. You could start Christopher Sanchez at game three if you absolutely need to. You can go with a full bullpen game in game three if you absolutely need to. So I'm not really worried about, uh-oh, what if I have to use Suarez in game one or two? Because I think they could win a bullpen game in game three with some combination of Sanchez and Lorenzen and Orion, and Hoffman, and the leverage guys they have already, I think they get away with it. Now, this becomes more complicated once they get to the National League Division Series because then you need the fourth starter, and you need to worry about, all right, how do I kind of make all this work? And they'll have to bring, I think, Walker back onto the roster, and that means someone else is chopped off. By then, we might have more information on Orion Kirkering, who really feels like the X factor in all this because how quickly he moves from, oh, he's intriguing, to, oh, 
you know, it's a eighth inning and they are tied or it's the 11th inning and they're tied. And here comes Christian Walker and Corbin Carroll, or here comes Ronald Acuna and, and Matt Olson. Like, is he in these spots over the next seven or eight or nine or 10 days? I don't know. Right now, I would think he's not yet, but all he needs is one big outing and he's going to convince the Phillies and convince every one of us he does belong in these spots. Tucker, as, as you look at the Phillies pitching as we go towards the playoffs here, it, it does feel like the question is going to be, do they keep an extra starter in just in case of a long game or they have to use Suarez or do they go with, you know, someone else in the bullpen? Like I, I think Orion's on the roster, but this almost comes down to like Dylan Covey, Christopher Sanchez, Taiwan Walker, how they prioritize those names. Yeah. And I, I think for me, and it's crazy to say this because Taiwan Walker was given $72 million, what, eight months ago now. I wouldn't put him on the playoff roster. I just don't see what he gives you over those guys. And if you look at the way Rob Thompson managed the bullpen last year in the postseason, he kind of went all out every game, right? And he drew a lot of criticism for it, but it worked through every series up until, you know, game six of the World Series, the first time it really came back, came back to bite him. And I just don't see Taiwan Walker fitting in there, right? Like he, he doesn't get big outs. He isn't a guy with swinging missed stuff. He had a nice stretch where he you know, was able to work in and out of trouble during the regular season, and maybe that is a skill on its own. But I always felt watching him pitch, you know, like I think he had a, a great start against the Cubs for like seven innings, one run, but allowed like 12 base runners. Can't do that against the Braves, right? Like it is, we're kind of staring down the barrel, maybe not wanting to look too far ahead. But if you're looking at an NLDS in a series against the Atlanta Braves, you're not stranding those base runners, right? Like you're, you're not getting out of a first inning where you allow four base runners and only giving up one run with the way that lineup is, is currently constructed and the way they're hitting. I just, I don't know what value he gives you over somebody else who can get outs out of the bullpen, who is more comfortable coming out of the bullpen. Maybe in a seven game series, Walker has a little bit more value because you might need a, a four starter and they feel more comfortable giving it to a veteran. But Right now, I just I don't see the value he offers a team in a three game or even a five game series. Yeah, I don't either. Um, and I, you know, I know there's always that worry that what if you need a, a guy to pitch a lot of innings? Well, I, I think they have Lorenzen and they have Sanchez that could do that. So the guy I would chop off, I'm, I'm Tucker and I are on the same page. I would chop off Taiwan Walker out of this. And then the other part of this that's going to become fascinating is is the trust level. And and we'll be you know. You can't hide it in October. In the regular season, while he pitched yesterday, we got a day off tomorrow. No, no, none of that stuff matters in October. You see very quickly who the manager trusts. I mean, very quickly. I mean, you'll, you'll see it with the, the first couple of moves, especially if these games are close, which they tend to be in the postseason. Once in a while, you get a blowout, but most of these games are, are close. You know, as I view it right now, I have two guys in this bullpen that I want the ball in their hands, and I feel good that the ball is in their hands. Jose Alvarado, who's kind of come back here in the month of September it looked very very good and we know how great he was early in the season before a pair of stints on the injured list with his elbow and then it's 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 Hoffman Jeff Hoffman who's been just money for this team for four months though that that's the list after that I have trepidation if the ball is in Kimball sand I have I've never really trusted Strom he's fine uh Soto I I don't trust him he's hot and he's cold you know then you go to the guys like they're hoping to get something out of Lorenzen. I mean, Sanchez has pitched to the level where you feel like you should trust him. It's just he's it's he, we're new to this with him in these big spots. And that's why, although the last four games or so, the Phillies, there's not much to watch for. I am going to be honing in. I'm going to get like a I set up an alert on my phone. Like, when is Orion pitching? Because I need to watch that kid pitch because I, I think there's a reality where he rises up the, the trust level for us and the Phillies very quickly here in the next week. And, you know, Fangrass put out an article yesterday, if you want to check it out, of relievers that have pitched in the postseason with five or less outings in their career. It's it's um, it's not a very big list. Most of it, it doesn't work out great for the team, but there is one notable exception, and that was Francisco Rodriguez, K-Rod, in 2002, who pitched, I believe, five times at the end of the regular season for the Angels, and then he was the difference maker in the postseason as the Angels went and won the World Series. So there's, there's some, like, there's a chance that we're watching something special and this kid is pitching against Ronald Acuna in Atlanta in game one, you know, a week from two weeks from Friday. Like that, that reality absolutely exists 
for the Phillies. Appreciate everyone listening, watching, subscribing. Uh, it's going to be funny, fun to watch. Or funny, if, if you can take it to be funny. I think it'll be fun to watch how the Phillies line this thing up, the pitchers they use, the pitchers they don't, and the trust level they have, especially after game one. Game one's easy. It's Zach Wheeler. But game two, Nola gets in trouble. Fourth inning, you know, how does how do the Phillies bridge, let's say, the next possible nine and like 14 or 15 innings? Like, how do they do that with the names they bring to October? That's on Rob Thompson, and it's going to be fun to watch. Appreciate everyone listening. Back tomorrow, as always, right here on WIP Daily.